viewers up to speed while simultaneously offering a nostalgia piece for hardcore fans. Regular viewers around here know that we take a lot of what's ever been presented since the original broadcast. If you enjoy the content around here, a thumb out of a few scarce pieces of media. When he wasn't moonwalking over guys that he just knocked out, Jackson's focus on being a more rounded boxer was apparent. That focus quickly shifted once he suffered his first defeat to Mike McCallum in 1986. A controversial second round stoppage made Julian swear an oath. He would never allow himself to suffer another loss unless the man defeating him had felt and overcome his truly destructive one-punch power. Essentially dropping the box and move gimmick to devote himself as a purebred power puncher. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh, the hardest punching junior middleweight today. November 21st, 1987. With a record of 31 wins, 29 knockouts, and one loss, Jackson took on the 41-1 in Chul Beck in what was Beck's second fight outside of his home nation of South Korea. It was a sloppier version of Jackson compared to what the fans were used to, yet his intent to score a knockout in the opening minutes was apparent, with his frantic approach only adding to the excitement. If he comes out storming, then we're going to have stormy weather. If he comes out sinking, then I'm going to have to go through the old chessboard. Jackson made his first title defense against the former IBF champ and evidently cocksure Moses Buster Drayton. Drayton was an aging fighter but more than capable of drowning untried challengers with his vast experience. Drayton fights uh, by his own book, I guess you'd call it. He's liable to do anything in there. Side of him. Which, which direction he's coming at you from? Good work inside by the champion Jackson. Under a minute to go, round three. Most heavy punch in the body by Jackson, the champion. What punishment Drayton is taking, Tim. And Drayton is still firing back. Oh, a big left, left hand. In. Oh, a tremendous left, left hand. Hook, Tim. Drayton dropped like a tree. And that became Jackson's trademark move, pointing to the exact spot his opponents would drop after landing his finishing blow. Bring all of them, get in line, because Julian Jackson is ready, and I'm ready to, to, to put St. Thomas, Virgin Islands, St. Croix, St. John on the map. And you're trying too hard. You step in with that jab and you'll get everything done that you want to do, right or wrong. As he often did, Jackson came out unleashing a vigorous assault to the body, softening and catching to Jesus off guard when he eventually switched things up top. Whenever I hit my opponent and I knew that I caught him right, I would just walk away because I feel a shock all the way up to my elbow. And whenever I feel that shock, I know it's over. Julian Jackson, Terry Norris is coming to get you. Jackson stepped up to big time boxing on July 30th, 1989, defending his world title against the future Hall of Fame speed demon, Terrible Junior Terry Norris. Away title, Julian Jackson. He had talked about doing some work to the body early, but it's been upstairs so far. It's Terry Norris, rather exciting combination. Brilliant hand speed, Norris. Good chopping right hand, and Terry Norris right here in the opening seconds has taken all the play away from the champion. I think Julian Jackson's having a lot of trouble with the speed. Norris came out and took complete control of the action, forcing Jackson on the back foot by landing a plethora of his signature combinations. A disjointed Jackson stuck to his game plan, confident in his ability to end the fight once the opportunity presented. Overhead itself. chopping right and... Again, the incredible knockout ratio of Jackson. Oh! And that right in that, Terry Norris is gone! He lost his concentration for one critical moment and caught a right hand from the champion! And I try to just keep a positive mood about myself and really go out there and try my best. Win, lose, or draw, I'm always a winner.
right, we had a fight a little bit uh, earlier this afternoon that I think that you'd like to see just how it ended. A rare three minutes of action that wasn't aired on live television came to light in recent years as Jackson took on Wayne Powell to prepare himself for a move to the full 160 pound middleweight limit. And that's following the second round. Right hand is to another right hand. Back in the second round, he did back Jackson off one time. Oh, there's a right hand. He won't get up from this one, I don't think. It's up to three and four and five. That's a right hand. Jackson waving bye bye. He didn't even bother to count him out. I'm just thankful this one at least made its way onto the internet. A murderous finish. Jackson's so dangerous with that right hand. This guy can punch. It was one of the hardest punches I've ever seen thrown by a middleweight. Jackson's mission to become a two-weight world champion saw him venture to sunny Spain to take on Britain's own Harold Bomber Graham. Oh man, it's it's going to be action from the, the round one, you know, and um, how Graham will definitely be on the bike, I know that. Bomber wasn't the best nickname to sum up the Brit Straits. He was a proud product of the Ingle Gym in Sheffield and widely regarded as one of the finest pure boxers Britain has ever produced. A defensive wizard that could switch it out of the southpaw yeah. stance. This is 12 for the opening round style of Graham uh, and the fancy pants. Almost impossible to, to double up on it. It's the art of this game is to hit without being hit and he's good at that round. To put it bluntly, Jackson was getting schooled. Graham was more aggressive than expected but remained defensively sound while letting his shots go on the inside. Getting seriously wrong with his eyesight but there was with that punch. Mile away there, Jackson. Jackson had no chance to win this fight on points. He needed to time something special to stop his man in his tracks. He's as sharp as a tack for this one. He was a good one. Oh, what a punch! I can't believe that. Never been stopped in his career. And he's out to the world. But that was a perfect punch. And really, before he hit the floor, he was completely out. No hope of beating the count. Graham needed to be perfect for 36 minutes. Jackson required only one second. The 1990 Knockout of the Year. I would think most people around ringside here would have you three rounds down when you landed that vital punch. Oh, definitely. I knew I was behind. You know, I knew, but I kept on him. I kept the pressure on him. I'm coming home with the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World! After defeating Robbie Sims, Michael Olegide, and the formidable Gerald McClellan, Dennis Milton, due to his crafty boxing style, was seen as a live underdog given Jackson's previous trouble with slick go, boxers. If you're going to face a Julian Jackson, who is a good right hand by Jackson. Jackson looking to air it out here in the very first round. And down goes Milton. Julian Jackson retains his WBC middleweight championship, knocking out Dennis Milton. They call me the hawk because there's a lot of chicken running from the hawk. <laughs> and I want the, the world to know that Julian Jackson is making his mark in the boxing today. Jackson was all business when he met his former chief sparring partner, Ron Collins, in the spring of 1992. from Mexico City, and we are set to go. Round one scheduled for 12. Champion is set. The man can punch. He just got hit. Collins just got hurt with a good right hand. Chris left ball. And that's a right by Jackson. Now he comes back with right and a right stagger is Collins. Having felt Jackson's power many times over the years, Collins was reluctant to go down. Instead, he started taunting his old friend in an attempt to break him down mentally. You ate that with a left hook. Collins just saying, come on. A courageous Ron Collins. Come on. Now he's going to be around to hear the points if he keeps taking those right hands. And he continues to jaw away at the champion. And Collins just talks to Jackson. Whoa. And once again, Collins is stunned. He's still there, Collins, still weaving and bobbing. Now he goes down, finally! It should, that should be it, that's it, that is it. Julian Jackson with a big knockout. One of the things that seemed to confuse you was he kept talking to you all during one of those rounds. What was he saying? Well, he was trying to get me to uh, punch myself out. And I realized that, so I, I held back, you know, and I let him uh, make the mistake. After his loss to Mike McCallum in 1986, Jackson produced a clean 17 straight victories, with 16 of those coming by knockout. Yet, due to poor management and promotion, he never became a star in his own right, often fighting on Mike Tyson and Julio Cesar Chavez's undercards. 
And as the years passed, fans started noticing a decline in the Hawk's skills. The power remained as devastating as ever, but his ability to set up shots, footwork, and overall stamina became a negative focal point, which was worrying considering his next challenge was arguably the most problematic of his entire career. Dangerous number one hitman in America. Dubbed the most dangerous man in America, the G-Man, Gerald McClellan, was the hottest prospect in world boxing, and according to the Kronk's Emmanuel Stewart, the most talented fighter he'd ever trained. The G-Man was on his way up, the Hawk was on his way down. Yet in all the years before and after, fight fans have never been blessed to witness a power puncher showdown of this magnitude, certainly at the middleweight level. Pop the familiar words of referee Mills Lane. But Julian Jackson starts in a hurry, as you can see. There's nice, good... There it is, a big right hand. Something we spoke about earlier, using that jab. Bam, the right hand over the top. Bam. McClellan can bang, as we said. You got to look for this guy early. Here he is early. And Jackson is rocked in the opening minute of the fight. McClellan started fast, showing no fear, unfazed by Jackson's offensive skills. Jackson responded well, landing some hard counters of his own. Two-time world champion. Oh, look out! After the first few minutes, it was clear this wasn't going the distance. I mean, this is kind of an even fight right now, folks. Reflex, and that takes your legs out from under you. Oh, nice shot by Julian. As he goes upstairs, no chance of South oh. there. Julian and win right here. Down goes Jackson. A left hook by Joe McClellan almost sent him through the ropes. He's not going to make this, Bobby. He's not going to make this. Julian Jackson doesn't it's know what over. It's over. Mills Lane has stopped the fight. A testament to his character, Jackson remained gracious in defeat. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. A quote that epitomizes the closing chapter of Julian Jackson's career. Thank you, man. God bless you.